In this video, I show you how to create API calls with Postman and PowerShell. Hello everyone, I'm Travis. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is on Postman, not the one that delivers your Amazon packages, but the application. Before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and all that good stuff. It helps my channel and I've turned watching the subscription count into a drinking game. I have to be upfront with this video. My background is in infrastructure, not development. If you're like me, starting out pulling data from web endpoints with a scripting language like PowerShell, this video will help you get started. If you're looking for a deep dive into Postman, you may not find it here, but you're welcome to watch anyway. An API accepts some type of input formatted as a URL, does something with it, and then hands it back as output. Postman is a free application that allows you to build and test APIs. In this video, I show you how to use Postman to build URLs that can be used in PowerShell to retrieve data. Although I use PowerShell as the scripting language in this video, you can substitute that with any other scripting language of your choice. Using APIs along with PowerShell greatly enhances the sources to pull data from. Sure, you can get process information from a computer or query AD, but what if you want to know the weather conditions at a remote data center or the drive time between two cities? This is where APIs can help. The problem with APIs, especially for someone like me with little programming experience, is that they can seem somewhat cryptic. That's where Postman comes in. Postman simplifies the process of building the URLs that target the API endpoint. The best way to review this is just to walk through some examples. If you want to follow along, start by going to postman.com and downloading and installing the program. I'll include all other relevant links below. I'm going to use two different sites that allow some level of free access for this demo. Openweather.org to pull weather information and OxfordDictionary.com to pull word definitions. They both handle API requests slightly different and both have free options available. You need to sign up to access these APIs. These APIs are free but not anonymous. There has to be some authentication in place to prevent abuse. This is done with an API key. The API key is like a password to the API, providing security and authentication for API access. When you register, you'll get an API key by email or by logging into the site. Save that, you'll need it for later. Let's get started. In the demo, we're going to format our API request with Postman and then use PowerShell to retrieve the data, first with Open Weather and then with Oxford Dictionary. And in case you're wondering, openweather.org is a site that I was using to pull some weather-related information. OxfordDictionary.com was just one that I thought of as an example. I really didn't have any project to use that with, uh, but it turned out to be a good reference anyway. Let's get started. Here I am at Postman. I should point out the reason I'm doing this video is because I wanted to pull weather-related information into PowerShell and view it in a display of some kind. When I found this could be done with open weather and API calls, I thought others may be interested in how I got this to work. Open weather has a lot of good information documented on their APIs. I'm going to hop over there now and I'll go to current weather data API docs. The first thing I'll point out is they have some good examples here to pull from. I'm going to copy this one. This is an example of how to get current weather data from a city. So I'll copy that and then I'm going to go back to Postman. And the first thing I'm going to do is just come up here and enter the URL. Now notice it added a Q here. Q is the city code and it added London. Now I'm not in London. I want to change this to Minneapolis. So this is the example. I'm going to hit send. And you'll notice right away it says invalid API key. Now, as I mentioned before, an API key is like a password. It lets the API endpoint know who's making the request. I'm using the free tier of open weather. It's free but not anonymous. So I'm going to grab the API key. And if you're following along with this, uh, you do have to sign up to get that key. They'll send it by email. I'm going to go back to the documentation and we'll see here, this is a better example. It shows the app ID and then your key. So I'm going to come back. So that's app ID. And type that in here. And notice what it did right away. It came up here, put an ampersand in and then the API ID. Now if I enter in my actual ID, it fills that in. So what I'm doing is using these query parameters 
I'm building out that API string. So now I have my city and I have my uh, API key. I'm gonna hit send. And now we get the results. I kind of glossed over this earlier, but all the results are coming out into this display. So uh, when it threw the error, we could read the error. Let's just do that again. Here I got a code 401 and the message is invalid API key. So I knew right away what was going on. And this is one of the nice things about Postman is you can interact with these API strings in a kind of a GUI method. It just makes it easier to see the results and understand what's going on. I'm gonna send that again. And I will change these uh, API keys, of course, once I get this published, so I don't care that I'm showing it. But here we're gonna see a couple things. Um, if we go down to, let's see, weather, there's a lot of codes here. I mean, we can tell that there's clouds and broken clouds and there's an icon ID and there's a lot of things coming through, but uh, temp is 300.09. It's not 300 degrees. So let's go back to the documentation and see what's happening. There's a couple things. I do wanna actually add a state code, but we'll come back to that. If we go through, um, I did a find and search to actually locate that. But if we go to temperature, I think it's down on the bottom. So here is the temperature is, the default is Kelvin, so that's why it's 300. Uh, metric, Celsius, Imperial, or Fahrenheit. And if we keep going, open weather is really well documented. Uh, not all API publishers document this well. So here, unit format. So here it's giving an example, uh, units equals imperial. I'm gonna change my API call to imperial, so let's go back there and add units. So now it should come back as imperial, and again, it just attack that on the end. If I hit send, 80 degrees, so that is accurate. So let's add the state code, because not all cities are well known. And if we go back to the documentation, we go all the way back to the top of this. And here it's just showing city comma state code. And here you can see London comma UK. So let's go back and add that in. So now it says city not found. And I'm not sure exactly if there's a problem in the documentation or a problem with the format I'm using, uh, but what I found I have to do is I'm going to add a value, and then I'm just gonna slide that up. So there's no key, but I, am, I do have the MN as the value. And you can see here now it's Minneapolis and equals MN. So if I hit send, now it's coming back correct. My point with this is how easy uh, Postman makes it to troubleshoot and build out these queries. So now that I have this, I'm going to copy it. And I'm gonna go over to PowerShell. I'm just gonna paste it in here in case I lose it. So I'll create a variable called weather. and equals invoke rest method. Give it the URI. And this does have to be in quotes. And hit enter. So now if I go to weather, I can get all my information. So just like that, I built out the API string. Now I can use PowerShell to grab it. And then I can go in and do like, um, I can pull up individual values. So if I wanted to just get the temperature, that brings me to another point on this. If I go to weather and I go to get method, we can see it's coming back as a PS custom object. I do want to do another test, this time you're running invoke hyphen web request. Let's do weather web. I'll just give it another value equals invoke
Okay, so now if I pull that information, here you can see I get similar information. The difference is if I pull up the data type, I'll use GM or that's get hyphen member. Here, I'll do that. You can see this is a an HTML web response object. So with the invoked rest method, it gave back a PS custom object. And with uh, the invoke web request, it came back as an HTML web response. So I find the invoke rest method is just easier to work with to pull the data. Uh, but I just want to point out those are two different ways to pull back data and the results are a little bit different that you get back. There was one other piece of information I just wanted to point out, and this is specific to open weather. If we come back to icon, you can see it's 04D. And I'll forget that, so I'm gonna just copy that. If I come over here, uh, I search for weather icons, and you can see here it shows the icons that come back. And it's got a little link here that tells you how to pull the data. I have another one open here, but if I put that in, actual image changed. Uh, let's just see a different one. Let's do 10N. There. So you can see it's just changing the icon. And the only reason I point that out is if I did want to put this into a dashboard or something, uh, I could pull this icon at the same time as getting the temp and the other information. So that's the first example using open weather. Let's move on to Oxford Dictionary. I'm gonna open up a new project and we'll come over to the Oxford Dictionary API information. Here is the Oxford Dictionary's API documentation. And this is a little bit different. First, I need the URL. So I'm gonna take this portion of it and use that as my starting point. They've got an example here, but it's not for PowerShell or Postman for that matter. Let's just start by building this out. So we have the uh, base, which is HTTPS, so it's an SSL call, and it even includes the port, API, version, entries. So let's, what do we need beyond that? Here it shows we need a language, and then we need the word ID. Let's go over here to make request to the API. We'll see if we can find this information. So here's language codes and you can see we can go to supported language code. Let's find English. So there's a couple of them. I'm gonna do en hyphen us. If we go back, remember that this isn't a key value pair. This is part of the path. So I'm gonna come back to Postman and enter en hyphen us. Now I'll go back to the documentation, the word ID, and that's just the word. So I'm gonna put in Azure. Now if I hit send, it says an authentication parameter is missing. So if you signed up for OxfordDictionary.com, you got an API key. And if we scroll down, we should see it needs a couple things. It needs an app ID and an app key. Let's type those in. Now I have those keys typed in, I need to find the actual value. Let me see if I can find it over here. I'm gonna to go to API credentials. Here's my application ID and key. And again, I'll delete this before I make this public. I'm gonna just copy these values in.
Notice it's putting the values up here in the URL. So I'll hit send. I'm still missing the authentication parameter. Okay, so what went wrong? Well, if we go back and take a closer look, the API ID and key are part of a header value. This is a little bit cryptic, but um, if you look here, it's getting the URL and it's also passing in some header information. And that header is the key. Um, so here's the difference. If we go back to openweather.com, the API ID or that key is embedded within the URL. The problem with that is that's getting passed to the API endpoint in clear text. And if you're security conscious, uh, that could be a problem. Now, I'm not particularly too worried about openweather.com, but as a good practice, keeping these values in the clear text uh, web request is probably not a good idea. So if you notice, Postman has an option here for headers. Under headers, I'm going to add the app ID and app key. We'll go back to parameters. I'll just copy these values over. And then I'm going to delete them. So what I'm doing with Postman is I'm not putting that as a parameter in the get request. I'm passing that through as the headers. Headers are encrypted with SSL. So if anybody's inspecting that traffic along the way, they're not going to be able to find that API ID and key. So now let's hit send. Okay, en hyphen us is saying is bad. So this is good. I can go up here and I think I know what the problem is. It's case sensitive. Let's try it again. And there it is. Now I have a bunch of data returned in JSON format. Uh, that is all great. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now we can submit this URL, but the problem is the API ID and key are not part of that string. So how do we handle that with PowerShell? Here I have that header information. So I'm just taking the uh, API ID and the API key. I'm putting those key value pairs into the header variable. And I also have a URI variable, which is the URL we created in Postman. So I'm just gonna grab all that and run it so it's in memory. Then I'm going to create a variable called Azure. I'll do invoke rest method. Add the URI. And add the header. So now it'll pass the URI and the header. And now if I get the output from Azure, there it is. Now I have the results, but if I just wanted to pull the definition, all I have to do is run this command. It's kind of mining down to find what the actual definition is, but there it is. And if you need to find what that is, you can either pull it up in PowerShell itself, or you can just come back here and look at the layout. This is just taking this JSON data and creating a PS custom object with it. That is how you build an API request in Postman and use that information in PowerShell. I went over a pretty simple example with OpenWeather, then moved on to Oxford Dictionary that required a, an authentication header. So I hope this helps you understand better how to use Postman to build these API requests and then use those requests in PowerShell. I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and click the bell icons for notification when content is added. Thanks for watching.